All right, so uh, gotta change out this brake can. Uh, there's a big spring up in here, so when you put the brakes on, it evacuates the air out of this chamber or out of this section here. And then there's a big spring in here, so once it lets the air out of there, the spring can push forward on the rod, and then the rod will push on the slack adjuster. It's up there. And that's how it puts the brakes on by pushing that way. So basically that slack adjuster takes up the slack as the brake shoes wear down. That turns the S cam that goes in and then it's got like a little S that turns and opens up the brakes. And then push on the drum. So basically the problem I'm having is that this isn't really holding uh, like a hill and the things of that nature because over time the spring that's in here will break and then you won't get the full spring pressure to hold the brakes on as the parking brake so there's two ways of doing this uh, you can take this clamp off down here now it's very imperative they don't really make the brake cans where you could take the strap off here it's it's molded now because if you take the strap off there this thing will explode and can kill you because that spring's going to come flying out of there they used to make them with this clamp like this so it's bolted together they used to make them where there was a clamp here and a clamp here and if you took the wrong one off you might not go home uh, but now they they basically they roll the edge so it's not really a clamp anymore. It's a one piece thing, so you can't really take these apart up here. Uh, but you can still take them apart down there. And inside here, there's a diaphragm. So there's pretty much just two diaphragms in here. There's one up on the top here, and there's one on the bottom. The one on the top takes the brakes off for the it, it removes the spring brakes or the parking brakes, and it lets that have slack in it or no pressure against it and then when you put on the service brakes it'll inflate this diaphragm here which will push the rod and it will push the brakes on so as long as you have air pressure in here the parking brake won't be on so a fail safe to the air brake system is that when you lose air pressure you lose the pressure holding the brake or the spring brake off and then it will apply brakes so if you run out of air it will automatically put the brakes on. So, what we have to do is swap this out. So like I said, you could take this apart here and just change the top half where the spring brake is and then either put a new diaphragm in or reuse the same diaphragm that's in there or you can replace the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just replace the whole thing because one, I have the whole thing, and two, it's actually kind of a pain to get this apart. So sometimes you actually have to loosen this up so you can clock it, and then your hoses can be coming out where they're supposed to come out, or where they generally are, so you can have clearance and things of that nature. So depending on how it was clamped in there th these hoses might be on the side here you might have to, like I said you might have to loosen that up to actually spin this so you can get the hoses to where you need them to be uh, so basically I'm gonna try to just change the whole thing so while changing the whole thing you have to first get this clevis pin out and uh, once that's out it will be detached from here then you have to take these two nuts off and then this will come out and then you gotta get these hoses off so with the new one the new one's gonna come with like a 12 inch rod on there because they're pretty much just universal and it depends on what your application is on how long of a rod you need so what we'll do is we'll remove this and then we'll have to cut the rod to the length that this one is and I'll probably put a new clevis on here in a new pin and uh, we'll reattach it I might change the slack adjuster just because it's 
getting there. I don't know if I can get it off. It's gonna be. It might be a nightmare taking it off, but we'll see when we get there. So first things first is uh, loosening up these nuts here, or getting that clever spin out, one or the other. But uh, I think I'm gonna need a little bit of heat for that because they're a little crusty. Kind of clean that one up they're not really the same size they're supposed to be when you start off you got to kind of beat the rust off of them and then then they become the size they're supposed to be i'm gonna need a wrench on this one i don't think i get a socket on there with the slack adjuster in the way there's that getting there yeah. now it's the right size again these are 15 16 so in case you're wondering that's usually the size they are so let me get the torch out and start heating this up and I'll probably take this one out first because it's gonna be the hardest uh, loosen up that pin out and away we go right. so I chalked the wheels and I Took the brakes off so I basically let the slack in this so it's not pushing hard on those nuts. Should help them come off a little easier. So there's a whole setup procedure for setting up these brake cans and brakes and stuff and you, there's angles and things that you want. So you want your braking force to be basically 90 degrees the can and everything because that's where you get your, your most strength from you don't want it to be over here and then or way over there so usually if you buy a new slack adjuster they'll tell you how to set them up and they, there's all kinds of places you can find instructions and stuff online and how to set your brakes up properly so basically once they're set up if you just replicate what you have you more than likely will be where you're supposed to be so that's why what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this can off and I'm going to cut it the same length as this to try to replicate what we have so there are there are reasons that it's set up the way that it is so keep that in mind when you work on yours that uh, that it might require well, not that it might require, but that it, it it's the way that it is for a reason, so you gotta put it back the way it is. Unless somehow it got thrown out of whack and you need to correct it, then there's that. <coughs> Whoa, scared me. Right in my ear. All right, so there's that. The next thing we got to do is get this lettuce pin out. There should be a cotter pin on the inside, generally. stuck in the slack adjuster.
hot. I didn't want to do this because it's going to rain. I might have done something. Meta. There we go. It loose. So now I gotta get that got a pin off. It's all rusted in there. What I'll try doing is prying on the cotter pin or the clevis pin, and maybe we can shear off the cotter pin. So there are many different types of cans. You have to make sure you get the one for your vehicle. You got, I think this one's a, this one is a 30-30. Um, they have 30-30, 36, 36. Generally these trucks take a 36, 36 because there's only a single axle. So, it gives you a little bit more braking power. This is an older truck. I don't really know exactly why these cans are on there, or if someone just put them on there, or how it came across to them, but that's what's on them, so I'm just gonna put back on what is on it. Um, you got long throws. Well, there's a bunch of different types, so you want to make sure you get the correct can for your application. Ah. Got an earful of salt. Oh. these hoses out right there there's a there's two swivels in there uh, generally these hoses have a fixed end and a swivel end and normally the fixed end goes in the can and the swivel end goes up wherever wherever they're hooked to uh, it looks like they got a swivel end on both so I'm just gonna try to get this apart as you can see this floor was clean before I started that's what's been falling on me. But, anywho, so I'm gonna need a new hose anyway. You see that these two hoses are the same size, and basically that's what it's supposed to look like. So you can see how swelled that is 
from um, from the air pressure being in there to keep the can on. So I'm gonna go up there and I'm gonna let the pressure off. So uh, so I'm not dealing with that. And it's gonna pop the pop the can out. So I'll put that there. Maybe you can see what should happen. you're wondering yes that did hit me in the face it's all part of the show it is it sometimes it's kind of nice that this truck is so tall but other times like right now it's like just everything's just out of reach I mean, it's nice I can I could sit up under here instead of having a like crouch, but it's everything is like just just out of reach. And this one's gonna do it too, I guess. was fun, right? Not very optimistic that this is just going to come off. See the snap ring. We're getting close. I don't know. It might come right off. It might not. I don't think it will. They make a puller that you can put on here. I wonder if I have the puller. I have a puller for something. I, I don't know if it's going to be for this. But they got different pullers for different slack adjusters. I don't think I can get. I use a. Uh, what's it called? A tire. A bead breaker. Slide hammer. And you just come in over the. If you catch the edge of it, you can drive them off. Problem is the spring is going to be right in the way. I don't think I can come in here, and I might be able to come in right there and get it. I don't think so, though. All right. So, okay. So both of these are extended fully. The safest way to store these is to take the caging bolt out, put it inside there, and keep the bolt tight so you keep the spring compressed. So. That's the safest way to do it. Um, so I'm going to measure the rod length. So three and a quarter, three and an eighth. I'll come over here. To measure three and one eighth. I'm going to cut that. Is that
So center is four and one, two, four and three eighths. We have four and let's see. Yeah, close enough. See what I mean about having to sometimes clock these. So if you look at the bolt holes are straight up and down. You can see those come out the side. Those are straight up and down. That's coming out top or at the top, but diagonally like that. So might have to. I don't know, these might be long enough because those are actually really pretty long. So it might be long enough I could just leave them, but I might have to loosen these up and spin that. We'll find out once I get it in there. All right, so I'm gonna try to get the slack adjuster off. I found the puller, the rod wasn't, was like the, the driver was too long and it went into this web here, so I wasn't gonna use it. And then I ended up finding a bolt that fit into it, so it's a lot smaller. So I'm gonna use. Pull it to get this off. Huh, that's kind of a surprise. Those are intact. <coughs> Might not be that bad. Wow, I better watch what I say. Right. So this is what I got on the shorter bolt. So it actually kind of goes on there. I had to take the grease fitting out. I don't know if this is for a slack adjuster, but it fits on there, so it works for me. Of course, I don't have the right size wrench for it. I'm gonna use my multi-wrench. One of two things happened, either it's coming off or it's crushing. Oh, I hope it's coming off. I'm gonna try to be optimistic.
That smells terrible. Oh, look at that. Didn't see that coming. All right, I'm done now. To be continued tomorrow. All right, so I'm gonna have to clock this can so the hoses don't hit the differential. So what we do is you take the little uh, caging bolt it's usually in here take the nut off and inside this cap there is a groove that this goes into put it in, turn it, pull it up now it's locked in put your washer and your nut on now what we're going to do is we're going to tighten this until it bottoms out and that will Suck in the rod here, so we're taking the pressure off the front of this assembly. Otherwise, if you try to take that off, it's going to be trying to come apart. So, you know, make sure you do that and it don't blow up in your face. on this so well, they're probably metric so they're probably 14 millimeter or 13 or something get pinched on here so you gotta kind of like prime them to break them loose a little tapered there. 
sometimes they're a real pain to get them back together because there is a spring in here so um, I'm hoping by having this locked down also when I pull this rod in it's gonna hold this end tight to the bottom here this is two pieces so I don't necessarily think that it's gonna do that so I want to kind of keep the bands on and see if I can rotate it with it in the bands still because like I say it's kind of it's kind of difficult to get it back together because of the, because of the bands here So I'm going to go at about a 45. So, like that. So, now where we need to be, and tighten these bands back down. Oh, it's my socket. So, by tapping the band there, it helps it seat. Otherwise, you clamp it on this end and this end. It'll just pinch the ends together. All right, so I'm gonna leave this bolt in there until we get it bolted back into the truck. It'll make it easier to hook up the uh, the clevis pin down there. Um, so usually these slack adjusters will have a number on them. This one does not have any numbers on it. So what I did was I went to the Haldex website and I know that this is a uh, manual slack adjuster. So I went there, found the manual slack adjuster selection, and then I scrolled through to get a bunch of different options. Uh, this is a one and a half inch 28 spline S cam hole there. And then you have different, different length. You're gonna measure from here to the here, and that's gonna give you the length on them. Uh, this is a five, six, and seven length um, in a manual in the heavy duty so what I did was I called Fleet Pride I gave them the number for the Haldex number and they, uh, they crossed it over to their OTR number and this is the one they gave me so it looks pretty much the same so I'm gonna uh, this is probably an OTR one 
I just got the measurements. I, I basically I needed a part number for them to cross reference. And that's what I got. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go, go under there with a pick and I'm gonna clean up the splines or the mating splines on the S-cam so this will slide on easily. Because you can just kind of push that S-cam into the brakes and you don't really want to do that. So I got a couple of new washers and a new snap ring for that. So I'm gonna go clean up them splines, butter it up with some never sees, and uh, and there we go. That's on. I'll uh, pump some grease through it. So the way that this works is you, you slide this collar down, put the nut on there and turn it back. Uh, so we'll so I'll grease that, put the can on, and I'll put the clevis pin in, and uh, then we'll adjust the slack out of it. You only want think on these you want less than an inch of slack not travel there's two different things so basically I put the can on I fill the air system and I release the brakes and then I will force this forward and what you get there that would be considered slack so let's say it was bottomed out right there and then you go like that and it will stop when the brakes hit and that's your slack right now there's a lot of slack in there so you see how that comes back that's because that's got a worm drive that's turning on there it's all right there's when it's stopping You can see how it's not going as far anymore. So basically, you only want like an inch of travel of slack. There's a such thing as the throw, and it's it's going to be different. Uh, it's probably different for different trucks, different manufacturers. So do your own research with it and figure out exactly what you're required. But generally, I set them with less than an inch of slack. So I'll pry it and once it hits the shoes once the shoes hit the drums that's where it stops because you can only push it so far and then I'll take a tape measure and then I measure off the pin to get my slack All right. 
That's what I mean by slack. You get a lot of slack there. But right now I got this can fully caged and fully compressed on the spring brake because of the, the uh, caging bolt in there. So I don't have to worry about letting the air out right now. Or not letting the air out, but putting the air to the spring brake to release it. See, that's what I mean, you got a lot of slack in there. So that's two, it actually wasn't under three, it was two and a half. So two and a half, and we extend to three and a quarter. So it's three quarters of an inch. That's not too bad. Usually I try to set it right around there, three quarters of an inch, roughly. Maybe I'll give it another turn. Pretty good. So, is that? I'm just gonna get the uh, hoses back in. So, don't forget 
put your cotter pin in the back of your clevis pin. Otherwise, it's going to come out and you won't have any brakes. Well, that won't work right anyway. So this end comes with this on it, which is swivel, and uh, it's got this fitting. So you don't have to put uh, thread sealant or Teflon tape on this uh, fitting here because it seals on the inside here and it seals on the cone. So you don't want to put thread, thread sealant on that. If you were to put thread this section in, then this, this piece would get thread sealant here um, or Teflon tape. But I already have these fittings in there, so I'm going to take them out, and I'm just going to uh, thread, uh, just you know, attach the hoses to the those fittings that are already in. So. together. Nothing says done like clipping a zip tie. So, I'll bring it back down. I'm going to uh, take this bolt out. We should be done. An easier way to take it out would be to just let the brakes off. I have the wheels chalked, so I'm just gonna go up there. I'm gonna depress the parking brake button. So it fills this can with air, and then I don't have to screw that all the way out. It'll just be a little bit to take the pressure off. There you go. So that is how to change an air can. And you can see why I had to tip that up because that would have been coming right out into the uh, the carrier there. So anyway, hope that could help somebody. Thanks for watching.